another thing I want to do now that I'm remembering is to make this loading state so that it can make more sense. So I'm going to go up here and do underscore and then do state. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and paste it in all of them. So I'm going to go here, paste it, go here and paste it, paste it here, paste it here, and then paste it in that last one. So loading state, loaded state, and then air state. All right, so we have the application state ready, and now we can start making call to the backend and see how we can map the response to this application state, which is what we're gonna be using to manipulate the UI. So let's go back to the folder and let's uh, collapse this for now. And I can actually close all this. And inside of the app folder again, so instead of the main app folder, I'm going to create another folder and I'm going to call it service. And by the way, you can create interfaces and enum with the Angular CLI as well. And you can also create service with the Angular CLI. And I can quickly show you an example. So I'm going to bring up my terminal and inside of the application, which is where I am right now, as you can see, I can do ng generate or ngg for short. And then I'm going to say service. And I want this to go inside of the service folder that I just created. So I'm going to type service and then I'm going to name it server. So that's going to be the server service. So that's the file that we're going to use to make HTTP request to the backend. And then I'm going to press enter. I'm going to click yes on that. And you can see that the English CLI created two files for me, the server service.ts and also the server service.spec.ts, which is a test file. So I'm going to minimize this for now. And if you go inside of that folder now, you can see that we have those two files. So I'm going to delete the test file because we're not going to be writing tests in this course. So if I open this file now, you can see that the uh, Angular CLI stubbed out the code for me. So I'm going to collapse this again and just clean this up a little bit. Just move this over. You don't have to do this. It's just a preference that I have. And inside of this class, we're going to create all the functions that we need to make HTTP requests. And before we can make HTTP requests in Angular, we need to do some setup. So let's go and uh, let me show you how you can do this. So inside of the app module, we need to bring in the HTTP client module. So we're going to put a comma and then do HTTP client module and make sure this is imported on top. So it's supposed to come from an Angular command HTTP. So that's the HTTP client module. So we don't need to do anything else here. I'm going to go ahead and collapse this again. And then now we can inject the HTTP client in the constructor for this class. So that's similar to dependency injection. Well, it is dependency injection. So we're going to say private. I'm going to call it HTTP. And then we're going to give it a type of HTTP client. So I'm going to say HTTP client, which is coming up here. So now we have the HTTP client injected inside of the server service. We can use this client to make HTTP call to the backend so that we can retrieve data and then map this data to our application state that we just created earlier right here this application state. So let's go ahead and go back and close this. So the first thing we need to do is to define a method to retrieve all of the servers. So let me show you an example of what you would usually see, which is the procedural approach. So we can have like get servers as the function name, and then it's not going to take any parameter and it's going to return an observable. So observable and that's going to be of type custom response. So that's the response that we created. You can see that's coming from our interface and then open and close curly braces. And inside of there, we will return this that HTTP and then we would uh, access the get and then pass in the HTTP URL inside of this get method. And we could do something like HTTP colon double forward slash localhost. And we're running on 8080 and you would go to forward slash server forward slash list. Okay, so that would give you the list of all of the or an array of all of the servers that we have in the backend. And we also have to type this as well. So I'm going to copy this and pass the type down here so that we can get rid of this error and then end this with a semicolon. So this is the typical way that you would actually make requests to the backend. And that's more of a procedural approach, which is totally fine. There's nothing wrong with this, but I just want to show you a different way of doing things. And to do this, I'm going to be taking a more reactive approach. So I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of that altogether. And what I want to do is to define an observable and I'm just going to call it servers. So when you're defining observables, it's a good practice to put dollar sign in the end. And that's how you denote an observable. So the server is going to be observable. It's going to return a list of servers. And then I'm going to set it equal to this that HTTP that get of course we're going to type it so we're going to say this is of type custom response and then we're going to pass in the url so here i'm going to say let's say i'm going to define some variable in this class so i'm going to use template literal and i'm going to say this that api url and let's go ahead and define this right now uh, quick fix declare so this is going to be some kind of string so we can leave it like this for now and while we're here let's just make this private 
and read only and then declare it just like that let's just set it equal to the string so that we don't get any errors and then we want to go to forward slash server forward slash list okay so this is going to return the list of all the servers and you can see i'm directly assigning this variable to this observable which in turn make this variable unobservable as well and then i'm going to do that and then call the pipe operator and inside of the pipe operator i want to do two things so i'm going to go ahead and uh, log what we got so i'm going to call the tap which is another operator and then use the console.log so we're going to log the response onto the console and then i can use the catch error so i'm going to say catch error which is another operator and then i can call a method so let's say this handle errors okay so we don't have this method yet and we're going to go ahead and create it right now so i'm going to click on here quick fix uh this is a method so i'm going to declare it at the bottom uh, it's on top so i'm just going to cut it up from up here and go down and then paste it so handle error let's just remove all this junk right here and this is going to return an observable of never and we can just return this guy right here so we're going to say return and we're going to call the throw error instead so throw error and you can see it's coming from rxjs as well and i can just pass this string for now remove all this and we need to make this unobservable so let's go here do observable and everything looks good so this is the handle error function we also have to import the catch error quick fix this is not what i want these are coming from rxjs so i'm gonna have to do this manually so let's go and scroll up and the throw error is coming from rxjs and i'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this line and we want things to come from rxjs for slash operator so operators right here and what we're looking for is the tap so i'm gonna copy this and paste it here and also the catch error and then paste it here all right so now all of our errors should go away so this is how i'm gonna define this observable we're gonna go ahead and make the call pipe the response we're gonna log it to the console so that we can see it and then we're gonna catch any errors that's gonna be processed by this method right here so this is our observable and i see that it's giving me the type of any and i don't want that so let's go ahead and just copy this uh i can actually copy all this and i'm just gonna go ahead and cast it so i'm gonna put it in front of this and change this to a custom htb response and then put this on a new line and since we're casting all of this, so we need to enclose this in the diamond. So I'm going to do, oops, uh, open and close and then copy all this or cut it rather and then paste it in here. So now if I hover over servers, you're going to see that it's returning an observable of type custom HTTP response. So this is the observable that we're going to be using in the component so that we can retrieve a list of all the servers.